What up, folks? Once again, it's your boy Chicago, the handsome liberal. The abortion ban. That's what we're going to be talking about today, folks. It's all over the news. Supreme Court's about to hear a case on that. And the feminists and the women are going crazy. My body, my choice. I'm sure you've heard that before. Well, what's going on? Let me just come out first and say it as clear as day. Like I said, I'm a liberal, but I pride myself on being able to see both sides of an issue. And I'll tell you, from the liberal standpoint, let's just put it this way. The, the issue of abortion to the right wing is very similar to the Second Amendment to us liberals. Now, both of them, for the most part, are legal or it's the right of the citizen. I will say the Second Amendment is a constitutional right, and there is no constitutional right protecting you to terminate the life of the unborn. So that's a, that's a little bit different, but for the most part, it has been established at least since the 1960s that a woman has a legal right to abort. Now, the reason I'm comparing these two is because both sides want those issues essentially eradicated. And what I mean is the, the liberals, for the most part, really want to get rid of your right to own a firearm. And the right wants to get rid of women's rights to abort. There's no clearer way to say it than that. I know there are polls they've done on liberals and, you know, there's a certain percentage of them that say they are in favor of gun ownership, but maybe not having that gun or maybe not having high capacity magazines or maybe not, you know, having assault rifles. The same thing goes when you poll the right. Well, we are in favor of a woman being able to have the right to choose, but... You know, maybe only after, maybe only up until six weeks or 12 weeks or maybe only in cases of rape and incest. The fact is they want to end the right to abort and the liberals for the most part want to end the right to own a firearm. We can bullshit around this issue all we want, but that is the end result. And you often hear that, you know, when a liberal gets elected, they're going to take away our gun rights. And when a right, when a Republican gets elected, they are going to take away women's reproductive rights. And there's a, there's a good reason for those chants or those claims is because to some degree that is true. It's just very difficult to do both. Now, when it comes to gun rights, I would have to give kudos to the conservatives and Republicans. What they have steadily been doing is passing legislation to strengthen your ability to have a gun. Uh, they've passed legislation that says you, we won't impede or you won't infringe on someone's right to own a gun. Because what has been happening is that even though you have a Second Amendment right, the liberals, particularly in areas where liberals have control, like Chicago, uh, various big cities in California, in New York, well, okay, you can own a gun, but you got to get a permit, or you got to pay a fortune to get a permit, or you got to pass some kind of test, or it can only be that type of gun, or you can only carry it in this. So even though you have a Second Amendment right in Chicago or New York or, you know, Los Angeles or somewhere, they've been infringing on it in ways that you have the right to carry a gun, but due to these laws, for some reason, I still can't carry it. And that is what is also happening with abortion is that even though you legally can have an abortion, well, if, if we detect a heartbeat or if, the, doc, if the, the doctor performing the procedure doesn't have residency at a hospital or, you know, or if we can detect such and such on an ultrasound. So it, it's the same thing that they don't want you having a right to abort just like the liberals don't want you having a right to own a firearm. So they can't undo the constitutional right and the conservatives cannot undo the case law from Roe Ro versus Wade. So they're passing all types of legislative loopholes that doesn't terminate your right to abort, but it adds enough ex extenuating circumstances that essentially it does do that. Um, and that's what's, that is what has happened, particularly now in Texas passing a law that says the woman cannot abort beyond six weeks of pregnancy which is around the time women start finding out that they're actually pregnant. So essentially you terminated their right to have a, a pregnancy termination because by the time they know 
they've already uh, ex they've already extended or went beyond the period that Texas allows. And there's several other uh, red states that are planning on following Texas lead. They've already stated it, and certainly when the Supreme Court hears this case, if they don't make any changes, they didn't make any changes to the Texas case, which is pretty damn strong. So it's it's, it's a very good possibility that the same thing could happen on a national scale. Now, I've had people ask, okay, well, you know, Roe v. Wade is from the 60s. You're talking 50 years ago. Is it, you know, it's not even possible. They're not going to they're not going to terminate a woman's right to choose. And my response right off the bat is that is absolutely not assured by any means. I mean, you have a 6 to 3 majority on the Supreme Court leaning conservative. So this absolutely could happen. And particularly when you look at some of the things that just got passed in Texas, which I just mentioned, whereas they now have given the citizens a right to sue anyone that helps a woman <laughs> obtain an abortion. And that could be all the way down to the Uber driver giving her a ride to the clinic. They are, and and there, are, there are lawsuits pending right now from citizens suing people that they're actually trying to prove in court, help, you know, assisted this woman in getting an abortion. That could be anybody from her mom, or uh, like I said, anybody giving her a ride or telling, giving her directions to a clinic or help, telling her the, the, the business hours of operation. Who knows what could follow in that? But as ludicrous as that sounds, that made it all the way up to the Supreme Court and they let that stand. So when you question whether abortion, the right to have an abortion since Roe v. Wade, which has been standing, could that be reversed or overturned? I would say just look at how they handled the um, the laws, the new laws they just passed in Texas as a strong example that this is absolutely, highly possible. We'll know in a few months. We'll absolutely know in a few months, but um, that was the first thing I wanted to run by you. Like I said, it's very similar to the way we treat the Second Amendment and how the right hates how we treat the Second Amendment. Well, this is the situation on the um, on the left with the way the Republicans are treating abortion. Now, here's the question that I really wanted to tackle in this video. What happens if abortion is banned? I know we go back to the, the babies in toilets, babies on park benches, botched abortions, using hangers and all of that. Is that true? I'm assuming in some cases it would be. I don't think every woman would want to try that. Some, some would try probably harder not to get pregnant in the first place because now you're, for the most part, forced. Keep in mind, our policies against men are a good example of what could happen if women... Uh, if, if abortions for women were were terminated, and what I mean by that is, obviously a man once he creates a child, he doesn't have all of those options. And has it really stopped men from creating children? No, but at the same time, it could increase the number of irresponsible mothers. I mean, that's just a possibility. I can't get rid of a child that I don't want. So once the child is born, I'm probably not going to be a good parent. Uh, and let's just be real. If a woman is telling you from day one, the moment she finds out she's pregnant, that she doesn't want the child, you're kind of living in a dreamland if you expect once the child is born, the woman to just mature and automatically be a great parent. It, yeah, it might happen to some, but we're talking 600 to 800,000 pregnancy terminations are performed in America every year. 600 to 800,000. If abortion is bad and all of those children are forced to come to term, let's assume we have a nationwide ban on abortion, all of those children are forced to come to term, yeah, you're going to increase the number of irresponsible female parents. I mean, they're just they're just not all going to be there for that child. Obviously, there are choices if you don't want a child that are beyond abortion. There's adoption. There are safe havens that will take your child, no questions asked, and there is a foster care system. But at the same time, those systems are currently already taxed, minus the six to eight hundred thousand children that are no that, that are not even created every year. If all of a sudden you're popping out six to eight hundred thousand new children, and let's be real, the typical um, the typical individual that chooses to abort is usually on the lower end of the socioeconomical scale. 
lesser educated, coming from a single parent situation. It's not, you know, there's cases where the mom and the dad shows up and all, but usually it's, you know, a situation where the dad didn't want the child either. So when you start making these, when you start forcing these children to be born or come to term, a lot of them are going to go on to the system. Now, keep in mind, for all of my right workers out there that are watching this, you already believe the system is taxed already, don't you? You already think that there's enough children on welfare. There's enough deadbeat dads. There's enough people getting food stamps. There's enough uh, free school lunch programs, et cetera, et cetera. Six to 800,000 more children being born. I understand right now the biggest issue is guaranteeing that child that's been created actually gets a chance at life. That is the issue right now. But once this starts happening, I guarantee you, <laughs> don't know how long YouTube's gonna be around or how long this video is gonna be around, but I guarantee you, this is gonna be very similar to the war on drugs, where in the beginning, we really wanted to get drugs off the street. We passed all types of draconian laws, mandate, mandatory is this, and mandatory that. And here we are a, gen a couple generations later, and we're like, this was not a good idea. Prison population is boom. It hasn't reduced any type of drugs on the street. In fact, it's made things get worse. I mean, you got a lot of people getting caught up in the system that getting ridiculous draconian sentences that did not deserve it. People were coming out and they're coming out worse than they went in. And we're looking back at the drug war on drugs and the way we handled it and saying this was a failure. That is going to likely happen if the Supreme Court upholds the ban that these Republican states are pursuing, is that you're ultimately going to say, maybe not in my lifetime, I'm in my late 40s. Like I said, maybe a generation or two, once all of this starts to become, starts to come to fruition, every year you're getting 300, 400, 500,000 children more than you would have gotten. And a large portion of those children are falling on the system and coming to the system for entitlements. And they're, they're going to need that for 5, 10, 15 years. Every year you're creating hundreds of thousands of more of those. Now, like I said before, we're not saying that everyone that, that chooses to abort is going to turn into a welfare child or a child on foster care or, you know, or grow up to be a criminal, so to speak. But... If you look at the statistics, they're not good, folks. They're not good. They're not good for a mom having children that doesn't want them and she's unemployed or, you know, working a minimum wage job. They're not good for a child that grows up in a foster care system or a child that was dropped off at a safe haven and then went from family to family. The outcomes for this statistically are not good. That's not to say that there's not a governor or a a brain surgeon somewhere that goes, well, you know, my mom got rid of me when I was first born and I grew up in the foster care system and, hey, look at me, I'm a lawyer. Yeah, there's some of that, but we both know, we all know what happens generally when children grow up in the system. And there's out of that six to 800,000 number that I just gave you, even if it's 10%, 20%, can those systems currently handle an increase of 10 to 20 percent? Well, we're already crying out now that too much money is going into welfare and food stamps and all of that. Just think about that. And in my, like I said, what I was saying before is that in a generation or two, because I'm in my late 40s, I may not live to see it, but in a generation or two, they're going to, it'll be just like the war on drugs in the 80s. Here we are 40 years later and they're like, we need to, we need to stop this shit. It's horrible. And that's what will happen with that. Generation or two, they'll look back and the, the amount of spending, the amount of entitlement spending and things like that. The, I, mean, you know, I, guess I suppose you may have to reach taxes on the working individuals and things like that. All of this shit that right, the right wing complains about now multiplied by whatever two, three, four hundred thousand children would cause. That's probably the best way I can put it. So we could talk about, you know, the hangers and the botched abortions and things like that. But at the end of the day, I believe that it's a very good chance that the conservatives will get this because there is such a strong majority on the Supreme Court. 
and there is such a strong push by the legislators coming out of several southern states. Now, if you believe the polls, most conservatives and Republicans believe that abortion should be legal to a certain standpoint. But that's not stopping the legislators. I mean, they're passing laws that don't even exclude rape or incest. And as a liberal, I'm going to be, let me just make this clear. When it comes to being pro-life or pro-choice, obviously I'm pro-choice. But the rape or incest, I tend to think that there's a lot of, <laughs> as Biden would say, a lot of malarkey to that. The vast majority of abortions are very similar to why deadbeat dads exist. Someone had unprotected sex, they were irresponsible, created a child, and they decided they didn't want that child. And when it comes to the amount of abortions that are performed due to actually being raped or being a, being a victim of incest, I don't have the numbers to show or numbers to drop on you in the links or anything like that, but that number is very low. <laughs> and I've, I've taken this poll on social media pages and things like that and just simply asked the women, how many of you know someone who's had an abortion? And out of the ones you know, because most women know at least one or two women that have had an abortion, how many of them were raped or impregnated due to incest? And the number just falls through the fucking floor. It has nothing to do with rape and incest, folks. That's just, you know, part of the reason they're trying to use to back it up. Like I said, I'm pro-choice for the sake of being pro-choice because I think uh, being pro-life and, and manda mandating all pregnancies come to term will create all of the shit that I just told you. And like I said, I believe that it's a strong chance that they will ultimately get this, but it will result in disaster, very similar to the war on drugs. I don't believe that the left is ever going to get a gun ban anytime soon. <laughs> not in my lifetime. So <laughs> what the left wants, they're not going to get. But it looks like the right will ultimately, they're going to move pretty close to this. With the Supreme Court, like I said, holding up what happened in Texas, anything is possible at this point, folks. Now, here's one other thing I'll ponder. I don't want to make the video go too long. But if you're going to essentially force a pregnant woman to carry the baby to term what happens if she says that i don't want this child so bad i'm going to fall down a flight of stairs it sounds ridiculous but i mean there's some you get pregnant by a guy you really hate or god forbid you're raped in that little small instance that that happens and they're forcing you to carry a rapist baby i'm going to punch myself in the stomach i'm going to go out and get drunk i'm going to do whatever it takes to terminate this baby and what do you do? Are you going to jail the woman? Because she's essentially doing what the the local Planned Parenthood would do, but not you've gotten rid of them. She's doing it herself. That's kind of the same thing as using a hanger or whatever. What happens to those people, people who perform botched abortions? I mean, I guess you're going to lock them up or something too? I don't know, but I do believe that in the process to protect the, un, the life of the unborn, it's going to lead to women being incarcerated. There's no way around that because people are going to still, just like with the war on drugs or any other law you pass against something that's very popular, namely the Second Amendment. What do you think come and take it means? That means even if you pass the law banning me to have a firearm, you're going to have to come and take it because I'm not going to give my shit up. Well, it's the same thing most likely that's going to happen with abortion. Even if you pass a law banning it, people are still going to try to do it. So what do you do? You if she went to Canada and aborted her child, do you do you arrest her when she comes back at the border with a smaller stomach? Or, you know, if they do it in the basement, do you come down and arrest them all? Or like I said, what if she's doing unhealthy things? A lot of women abort because of their career. You know, I'm about to go to school or I'm about to get into modeling or whatever the case may be. They may have career ambitions and they get pregnant and they do not want to have the child because it interferes with their career. So if they find a way to get rid of the child, then you have to arrest them for breaking the law, right? So my guess is what's ultimately going to happen is there are going to be moms that will ultimately be locked up as well. But all of that is speculation. I think it's good speculation, but it's all speculation. One thing that is not speculation, though, is that there, there is 600 to 800,000 aborted children in the United States every year. That number has been dropping, by the way, but it's still hundreds of thousands of fucking fetus and embryos being terminated. And 
if you ban abortion, those children are going to be added to the number of children that are born every year. And statistically, there's no way to deny that that will cause a higher request in applications for entitlements. We're not thinking of that when we think about passing a law that bans abortion. So I just want to end this video right there by saying that. What do you think? Do you think I'm missing a mark on this? Do you think it'll just be all roses? <laughs> I mean, if they if they do ban abortion, and what do you think? You think there's a real chance that this could happen? I absolutely do. I've made that clear throughout the video with a six to three majority and what just happened in Texas. I think it is actually more likely than not at this point. But what do you think? Drop a comment. If it gets too heated, whatever the case may be, like I said, I will respond as always to comments in the um, comment section there. If you like what I just had to say, feel free to hit the like button. If this sounds you know, too gross to go ahead and hit the, hit the uh, dislike. I don't have a problem with that. But if you hit the dislike button, please drop me a comment. Let me know why, and we'll talk about it there. Once again, like, comment, subscribe. Your boy Chicago, the handsome liberal. Catch you later.